Hey everyone, GA loves trains here and welcome to Traversing the Edinburgh Trams where it's going to be my aim to visit every single tram stop on the Edinburgh Trams. Now usually I would make like a little series out of this but there's really no need for me to do that because basically there's only 23 tram stops and they're all down one line so I think it's going to be pretty easy for me to get them all done in the one day. So I am starting here at Edinburgh Airport, I'm going to just basically start at one end and make my way one stop at a time down right to the other end. The trams are every seven minutes so it really shouldn't take too long at all, theoretically, very theoretically. <laughs> There's not a lot here on the platforms, there are two platforms, it is on an island platform. There are some information screens right at the end. So from the tram stop obviously you just head down there I think where it says departures and you can get to the airport if you get in a flight. Um, but here just outside of the tram stop as well there's a little waiting room which is inside uh, a tram. From the tram waiting lounge to the actual tram, I'm on 267. When I first saw these trams, I was like, do they even have numbers written on them? They do, it's just uh, the numbers. They are actually written all across the side and at the very front of the tram, but they are very small. I'm at Ingliston Park and Ride. I'll be honest, when I first saw the name of this stop, I thought it said is. In, in Islington, I can't even say it now. Islington, you know the one in London, but um, no, it's Ingliston. Ingliston Park and Ride has got a park and ride. It's also got two platforms. There's a waiting shelter on either platform and ticket machines. I'm trying to spot planes at the minute because I can totally hear planes, I just can't quite see them. Just got off 265 and that's brought me to Gogabum. Sorry, Gogaburn. I genuinely may have written down Gogabum. <laughs> I actually thought that's what it said on the map, um, but it's Gogaburn. Gogaburn's got two platforms. It's also got the standard stuff I'm noticing, even though it's only been three stops, but still. Uh, we've got waiting shelters on either platform with seats in them, and I'm sure there'll be ticket machines. I'm just travelling on a mobile ticket, it costs £12 to like ride around the network for the day. That includes buses as well as trams. So Gogaburn is called Gogaburn probably because it's named after the piece of water which I think is what we passed over on the tram. You can't quite see it from here uh, but I did learn that a burn is a small river. Okay, just got off 2.5 now, I was trying to vlog on there but we were pulling into the stop already and um, I may have accidentally just left my phone on but it's okay, I just got, went back on and grabbed it and came back off on so I keep doing that lately. There are two platforms at Edinburgh Gateway, we've got some seats along the platforms, ticket machines, bins, I'm pretty much just going to stay here uh, until the, oh it's only two minutes off the next tram actually. If you go up them escalators, it will take you to Edinburgh Gateway Railway Station, which is where you can connect for your trains, um, which take you up to the north of Scotland. There is also a tram depot, which you can see um, down at the other end of the stop. I'm on 273, and I'm not gonna lie, this tram kind of smells like nothing. But this today is the first ever time that I've actually ridden on the Edinburgh trams. Unlike the Manchester trams, they do have luggage racks, which is very handy, obviously, for people going to the airport. And they also have stop buttons, but you don't actually need to press them because the trams do stop at all stops. But they are handy to have in case, like, for instance, um, the service is really busy and it just makes the driver aware that you do definitely want to get off. Oh, it has just started to rain a little bit. Tram's off now. Um, but I am at Gyle Centre, but the Gyle Centre itself, um, I think, is the shopping centre that's that way up onto the sign that's up in the station. Um, I did notice before, yeah, I can see it now, there is um, a massive Morrison's over there. 
Oh jeez, I don't know what's going on with the weather. It's uh, going a little bit windy now. But uh, the Girls Centre does have two platforms. I feel like I'm going to be saying that a lot today. Um, it's also got like the usual layout that I'm noticing at these stops. I do really like the layout, to be honest with you. Right, I've decided I'm um, probably going to miss the next tram because of this, but I'm going to have a walk over to the Morrisons because it might give me a chance to go to the toilet because obviously no toilets on trams and uh, just grab a bit to eat as well. Just got off 257 and that's brought me to Edinburgh Park Central. So this is the first of the two Edinburgh Parks. Edinburgh Park Central, uh, it's got two platforms, it's got card readers, it's got a really lovely view actually, some trees and there is some flowing water, so I think I'm gonna have a very quick walk down to that. Yeah, it really is quite pleasant here. I wish I had time for a picnic. We've got some picnic benches and uh, that little bit of flowing water there is called Loch Ross. And I believe a loch is a Scottish lake. I'm on 270. It's great to be back traversing again as well. It's so fast paced. I've got like so much to remember to do at the stations with it's such a small space and time. Yeah, it's odd as well. There are buttons on the doors to open them, but you don't really have to press them because the doors tend to, at most of the stops I've noticed so far, they just open all of them automatically. Right, I'm at Edinburgh Park Station, where would you believe you will find a station? Yeah, there's a rail station um, just over across from me here. You can connect for a train there to Glasgow, I believe. So Edinburgh Park Station has got two platforms. I honestly thought that was the sound of my tram coming in and it was like a coach. Yeah, it was a coach or a bus or something. And there is a massive sign outside of the station for a retail park. So obviously you can go there as well. All right, next tram's here. It is, where's the number? 262. So you do have to press the button to get off here at Bankhead. Bankhead's got two platforms. Again, very similar layout with the shelters and the ticket machines. All right, didn't quite manage to get a shot of it because it did take me surprise when it went past, but the railway line is just here. I did just see a Scott Road Class 385 going past there. I am just going to sit here for the seven minutes. Well, it'll be less than seven minutes now, but um, nowhere I need to walk to outside of Bankhead. I did see, actually, on the tram just then, there was like a cycling walking path. I was kind of wondering, like, where does that go? But anyways, I've gone past it now. There is this little grassy bit you can stand on just back from the platform. I saw other people doing it, I thought. So I'll join in. There was just an announcement here saying the police have been called to the tram stop due to antisocial behaviour. But anyways, next tram's here, it's 254. I'm at Salton. This may be a popular stop because a lot of people just got off the tram and I was going off. Um, also, as soon as I stepped off, two trains went past one in either direction so again we are just following the railway line at the minute. Sawson's got two platforms also the platforms along this uh, tram network they are really low down like the proper like close to the tracks I'm not used to seeing platforms this low. Blimey time is really flying by it's only three minutes until the next tram um yeah i literally feel like i've only just stepped off the last tram but also i have noticed uh, that the shelter across over on the other platform is smaller than the shelter on this platform just trying to pick up on anything at this point i'm on 256 there's really no point in sitting down because as soon as you sit down you practically have to stand back up again but uh, do be aware as well that you do have your tickets checked on board these trams and if you don't buy a ticket out of the station you get charged extra. I'm at Bell Green where ironically you can go to Salton Park. Yes, Salton Park is closer to Bell Green than it is to Salton. <laughs> Bell Green's got two platforms, it's got a bin bag tied up on the floor, there is a grip box and a bike rack. 
But I have come for a walk to Salton Park and I'm just looking at the map and honestly it's actually quite a big park. There is a lot in here. There's even some water, water of leaf weir, but that's like right over in the complete opposite direction. So I think I'm just gonna head back to the trams. <laughs> Two seven five has brought me to Morrifield Stadium. Where would you believe you can find Morrifield Stadium, the actual stadium, and uh, you can see it pretty damn clearly from the platform. As well as having two platforms, Morrifield Stadium also has a lift for step free access. And I was wondering if there were turnstiles, but they're actually just gates. The platform over here is proper wide, it's really lovely being so spacious actually. Um, on the way in on the tram as well, I did notice a train depot. Just looked it up, it is Haymarket Depot. I'm on 267, standing by the door again. Not only because it's easier, but because this tram is a lot busier. It seems the closer to the city centre you go, the busier the trams are. I'm at Haymarket, there are a few stops along the network where you can change between tram and train, this obviously being one of them. Haymarket railway station is just across there and it is one that I've actually heard of before. Haymarket's got two platforms, they are across from each other as opposed to being on an island platform because it almost looks like it's an island platform from this angle but right here is actually the road and there is a, a bus stop place like right here in the tram stop. I like this advertising up in the um, shelter type thing. The light of the earth up by tram. Yeah, just looks lovely. Well, again, I don't know where them seven minutes went, to be honest. Uh, we're getting on the next tram, it's 253. Well, I've always wanted to be in the West End. Finally, it's happened. I'm at West End. It's uh, actually rather windy. So the tram tracks at the minute, they are running right alongside the road, it's always fun. West End again has got two platforms, these are on an island platform though. There's a shelter there in the middle and would you believe some ticket machines and yeah just the usual stuff. Not sure why this happens when I'm out traversing but my camera battery is like going down drastically. Like, usually it doesn't do this when I'm on the train so I don't know what it is about trams but yeah. Um, I've got to be careful with that actually because I've only got one battery. There were some stunning views then to Princess Street on 268. Uh, you can actually see, well you can't quite see it here because there's some trees in the way, but on the way then you could see Edinburgh Castle in the distance. I was actually here at Princess Street this morning when I was getting the tram up to Edinburgh Airport and honestly there are so many buzzes that pass by this tram stop. When you're at Princess Street you put your knickers on your head, you put your knickers on your head, you put your knickers on your head. When you're at Princess Street you put your knickers on your head and you shout SQUISHY BABIES! It is so busy here but we are slap bang in the centre of Edinburgh. Princess Street does have two platforms on an island platform. There's information displays and all the rest of it. Um, you can get to Princess Street Gardens from here. Getting on 265, it's very busy on here. I think a lot of people might be getting off, hopefully. I'm at St Andrews Square. You can walk from here to Edinburgh Waverley Station again, making train connections. I have to say though, I'm a bit surprised at how far, it, well, it felt like it, we actually like properly like, turned and came quite a way away from the station, to be honest. I thought it would be a lot closer. First thing you actually notice when stepping off the tram here though is the view right down there. Look at that, how gorgeous is that with flowing water in the hills. St so Andrew Square has got two platforms on an island platform again. Uh, and I am just wondering at the minute, looking at the information displays, it says there's a tram to New Haven in four minutes, but then underneath that it says there's a tram to New Haven in one minute. Not so sure what that's all about. Just 
just got off 259 and I'm now at Picardi Place. Now, this stop and onwards from here is actually brand new. And when I say brand new, like it literally opened a few weeks back, I'm pretty sure, on the 9th of June 2023. So I believe there was a stop just a little bit further up from here called York Place, but that's now shut uh, so it's basically been replaced by Picardi Place. So Picardi Place has got all the standard features that the other stops have had. Um, the main difference I can see with it being a new stop is the colour scheme, so it's got a lot of like grey sort of um, poles and lamp posts and the information displays again are a grey colour. Um, it has got two platforms and uh, on an island platform. I'm on 264, I thought the trams might be a little bit quieter down this new bit but no, they're still quite busy to New Haven. I'm at McDonald Road, there's uh, no Mackies down here but um, again it's got two platforms and it's an island platform. Again, there's that grey colour, there's a lot of traffic going past along the roads. In these shelters as well, there is a different kind of seat, it's actually a lot thinner. There was also a little while back a medical emergency at St Andrew Place, so the trams at the minute are suffering from um, not too bad a delay, but a little bit of delay. just got off 266 and I'm now at Balfour Street. I am pronouncing it like the tram now. But um, because of that medical emergency, we were on like 10 minute waits, but we are back down to seven minute waits now. Balfour Street has pretty much got exactly the same layout as McDonald Road, like with the shelters in the middle and then obviously the ticket machines um, at either end. Yes, it has got two platforms again on an island platform. Getting on 267, this has got quite a colourful exterior, hasn't it? Okay, we have branched off the main line now and I am at foot of the walk now and I was really intrigued to know why this stop was called foot of the walk. Um, but I've just seen that there's a Weatherspoon across over on that platform that's called the foot of the walk. So it might have something to do with that. Okay, I've not actually got very long here, there's only five minutes until the next tram, which is a bit of a shame because this is a bit of a different looking stop. Well, I mean, it ain't an island platform, we have got two separate platforms here, um, and also there are no shelters. But what there are here is a lot of benches, I really do love the look of that platform over there. Uh, the next tram is actually here now, it's 269. I'm at the shore. Am I sure? Yes, I'm sure. I'm at the shore. The shore's got two platforms on an island platform. Oh, my nose, I've just seen the information display. There is a tram in one minute. They're all coming like very successfully at the moment. Um, just had a very quick look around. I do like the floor here. We've got some like were tiles, let's say. And as for the rest of the stop, it's pretty much the same sort of stuff. You can get to the water of leash from the shore, but I think you can also get to it from the next stop, which is Port of Lee, so I might go have a look at it there, just whilst the tram is um, coming in at any minute. I'm on 257, the tram's quite in down now, so uh, we go down to New Haven. I'm at Port of Leaf. This is uh, quite a pretty stop, actually. I really like the, uh, the little strips of grass in the tracks. Port of Leaf's got two platforms on an island platform. It's got a shelter in the middle, ticket machines at either side, uh, and some benches. Oh, it's absolutely beautiful around here. I could definitely spend longer here. Um, I have just seen a tram going across that bridge, so I'm guessing the next one's in seven minutes. Two six two has brought me to Ocean Terminal, which is the penultimate stop. I was a little bit hot on that tram actually, because I did have to run for it. Ocean Terminal is near a shopping centre, I'm guessing it's what's behind me. 
there's two platforms here on an island platform. Um, there's no glass in the tracks here, but again, it's exactly the same layout. They are the camera slashing right at me. Uh, we've got a shelter in the middle and then all the other usual bits and bobs. Get off the final tram of the day, 258, and now the terminus of New Haven. Alright, I'm trying to film the rest of this vlog um, before the camera battery completely dies on me, but New Haven's got two platforms, um, it has got shelters, ticket machines, touch in, touch out, point. Oh, it's got some grassy bits on the tram tracks as well. Just come for a walk to New Haven Harbour, you can proper smell the sea here and the view is absolutely gorgeous. Well, I have had a wonderful day today riding the Edinburgh trams for the first time. Honestly, those trams are absolutely great to ride um, and I'd absolutely love to come back up here and ride them again one day. I'm G Loves Trains and I've been to every single tram stop on the Edinburgh trams. Thank you very much for watching everyone. Fuzzy bye!